Good morning, great deep learners. Welcome to another episode of the Sun of Facebook Live Science A, where learning is fun with Sir JC Dickerson. Before we start our discussion, make sure that you have prepared the following world map, wrapping paper or bond paper, ruler and pencil, and especially your science module. And make sure that your workplace is clean. So learners, make sure to clean your area of responsibility first. Last week, we learned how typhoon is formed and developed. You should also remember that the name of hurricane or cyclone depends on its origin or the place where it occurs. For example, the name hurricane is given to systems that develop over the Atlantic or the Eastern Pacific Oceans. In the Western North Pacific and Philippines, these systems are called typhoons. While in the Indian and South Pacific Ocean, these are called cyclones. Mam Sally also discussed the updated tropical cyclone classification and revised warning system as shown in the table. This morning, we will be a meteorologist like Mount Dani. As we try to trace the path of typhoons that enters the Philippine Area of Responsibility, or PAR, using map and tracking data. But before we start, as a meteorologist, we should have enough equipment for us to do our job. Can you help me identify the different weather instruments a meteorologist should have? Great! First one, this instrument measures the air temperature and if Pag-asa detects 26.5 degrees Celsius or higher temperature, then there is a possibility to a tropical depression to start. Timer starts now. Time's up. The correct answer is thermometer. Second feature. It measures the atmospheric pressure for a possible tropical cyclone. Your time starts now. Time's up. The correct answer is barometer. Third feature, it uses two thermometers, a dry bulb and wet bulb type. This is to measure relative humidity of the air. Your time starts now. Time's up. The correct answer is psychrometer. Fourth feature. This instrument measures wind speed and direction. Your time starts now. Time's up. The correct answer is Anemometer. Fifth feature. This instrument measures water vapor content of air or humidity. Your time starts now. Time's up. The correct answer is hydrometer. Sixth feature. This instrument measures wind or wind velocity, pressure, temperature, and humidity. Your time starts now. Time's up. The correct answer 
is rearing fun. Last feature. This instrument detects and tracks typhoons and cloud masses at around 400 kilometers or less. Your time starts now. Time's up. The correct answer is weather surveillance radar. Great job, learners! Now that we have an idea what the meteorologist is using to track a typhoon, the question is when and where we can start tracking it. You may start typing your answers in our comment section below. Very good. We can start tracking a typhoon once there is a cyclogenesis or formation of the cyclone, in or LPA, that is detected by the radars in our areas of responsibility. It is the duty and responsibility of the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration, or PAGASA, to monitor and to inform the public about the status of all tropical cyclones before it reaches the PAR. Pag-asa forecasters uses three domains where they monitor, analyze, and forecast tropical cyclones. These are the Philippine Area of Responsibility, Tropical Cyclone Advisory Domain, and the Tropical Cyclone Information Domain. If a tropical cyclone is present inside these domains, Pag-asa is obliged to provide information about weather disturbance to the public. The TCID, which stands for Tropical Cyclone Information Domain, is the outermost monitoring domain of Pag-asa. Tropical cyclones inside the TCID are of least concern for the forecasters that are necessary enough for monitoring and public awareness purposes. It is represented by a yellow imaginary line with the following coordinates 0 degrees north, 110 degrees of east, 35 degrees north, 110 degrees of east, 35 degrees north, 155 degrees of east, and 0 degrees north, 155 degrees of east. Now, what do we mean by TCAB? TCAB or Tropical Cyclone Advisory Domain is the middle of the domain where a tropical cyclones within are too far to have any direct effect in the country but are close enough for closer monitoring. Disturbances within this domain needs the true ones of a tropical cyclone advisory. It is represented by the red imaginary line with the following coordinates. 4 degrees north, 114 degrees of east. 28 degrees north, 114 degrees of east. 28 degrees north, 145 degrees of east. And 4 degrees north, 145 degrees of east. And the smallest domain we're in, we can rename the typhoon to a Philippine name what is called the Philippine Area of Responsibility, which is located northwest of the Pacific Ocean with the following coordinates. We have 5 degrees north, 115 degrees of east. 15 degrees north, 115 degrees east. 21 degrees north, 120 degrees east. 25 degrees north, 120 degrees east. 25 degrees north, 135 degrees east. And last, we have 5 degrees north, 135 degrees east. The question is, what are these numbers? 
and how to plot it in our map. For us to know how or what these numbers mean, we need to learn what latitude and longitude is. Latitude is an imaginary line parallel to the equator. This has the point of distance from left to right, while longitude is an imaginary line from North Pole to South Pole with a point of distance from top to bottom. Let us now plot these coordinates according to their respective places. First, we have 5 degrees north, 115 degrees east. Second, we have 15 degrees north, 115 degrees east. Third, 21 degrees north and 120 degrees east. Fourth coordinate, 25 degrees north, 120 degrees east. Fifth coordinate, we have 25 degrees north, 135 degrees east. And last coordinate, we have 5 degrees north, 135 degrees east. Great! The area within the coordinates is what we call the Philippine Area of Responsibility. Let us now compare the track of these two typhoons last year, as you've seen on our virtual board. We have Super Typhoon Roddy, which has an international name of Goni, and Typhoon Ulysses, with an international name Bangkok. Now, based on the image presented, where do you think these tropical cyclones form? Is it formed in land or in the ocean? Correct. It was formed in the ocean. Again, based on the image presented, when do you think Typhoon Rolly makes a landfall? Right. It made its landfall on November 1 last year at around 8 in the morning. Next. When this typhoons or typhoon leaves the bar? Okay, great. Super Typhoon Raleigh leaves the bar on the third day of November and Typhoon Ulysses on the 14th day of November. Now, what do you think the temperature of ocean water before Raleigh entered the bar. Good! We all know that the typhoon starts to form because of warm water from the ocean that evaporates. Lastly, what have you noticed on the location of their formation? Very good. Raleigh was formed outside the bar, while Ulysses was formed inside the PAR. Now, to sum it up, let us try to answer if the following coordinates given were under the Philippine Area of Responsibility. Are you ready? Okay, for the first coordinate, we have 6 degree north, 145.10 degree Okay, the answer is no, it is not under the PAR. Second one, 6 degree north, 141.7 degree east. Is it under PAR? Okay, the answer is no, it is not under the PAR. Next, we have 7.2 degrees north and 134.13 uh, degrees 
is. Is it under PAR? Okay. Yes, it is. Number four. 7.4 degrees north and 128 degrees east. Is it under the PAR? Okay. The answer is yes. And for the last coordinate, if we have 9.1 degrees north and 122.4 degrees of east, is this coordinate under PAR? Great. The answer is yes. Great help, great deep learners. These are some of the coordinates of Typhoon Sento, which occurs 10 years ago. I am glad that even we are not, or even if we are not meteorologists by profession, we still manage to trace the path of typhoons that enters the Philippine Area of Responsibility, or PAR, using map and tracking data. Now, you will able to track a typhoon on your module using the tracking data of Bagyong Sendo, which is found on page 26 of your learning packet. For your questions, Please type it on the comment section below, as we will try to answer that after this live discussion. And you may also visit Pag-Aso website flashed on your screen. Alright, thank you so much for your active participation. And always remember that the key to surviving a natural disaster is preparation. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. That's all for today. See you next week. Bon man. Magandang araw mga kapapapulit sila. Una, nais ko samantarin ang...